Hey guys, today we are going to deal with the armament of this bird. We have a lot of stuff to go through, so let's get right into it. The kit bombs are not bad, but the fins are very thick and this is a no-go. Fortunately, I have some leftover photo edge fins from an Edward kit and I'm going to employ them here. As can be expected, the photo edge needs some bending and gluing. But when that is done, the fins will be looking much better and we will have much more true to scale appearance. Along with the fins, the photo edge set provides with some more details. Namely the details in the back where we can find the tail vane. The arming stem I made from stretch sprue and all was super glued together. For easier assembly and better alignment, I made 4 grooves with 90 degree spacing. After placing the fins in position, I super glued them and now all looks much better. After a coat of black primer, I speckled the bombs with grey surfacer using the airbrush. A cool technique I learned from Duke's Models channel. Then I started layering Tamiya's XF62 olive drop until I was happy with the opacity. The goal is to have a nice color, but also to have a hint for the speckling underneath. To start the weathering, first I covered the details with white spirit. Then I applied a few dots of buff oil paint all over the surface. Then I blended the oil paint, but not to the point where it becomes a filter. I wanted to have some spots with different opacity randomly distributed on the entire surface. Black enamel wash was the next layer of weathering, or rather shadow boosting. The wash was applied in the crevices and the corners mainly around the fin. I removed the excess wash using a fine brush dipped in white spirit. This is a more time consuming method of excess wash removal, but it is much more precise than wiping the wash away and hoping that it will stay where it needs to. Finally I highlighted the edges using Aptailung neutral grey oil paint and the dry brushing technique. To conclude the work on the bombs, I installed the bomb racks on the bomb bay walls and then super glued the bombs in position. The fit is not exactly reassuring, but I will try not to knock them off. We all know this is inevitable, but hey, let's be positive here. The kit provided aiming station is decently detailed, but it can always get better with a few cables running around. I have a few pictures, so I don't have to make it all up, but it will be a render of the real thing anyways. The softness of the soldering wire allowed me to easily create curves following the shape of the base object. After drilling a few small holes in the bottom of the seat, I glued in some handle-like details. Those are not handles, but rather attachment points for the seat belts. After the glue was dry, I bent those details outwards to lower their profile. I painted the aiming station in the same manner that I did with the interior. Link to that video you can find in the description. After that I did some bare metal chipping using a silver watercolor pencil. Finally, after I attached the seat belts to the seat and the seat to the aiming station, I glued the armor plate and the aiming station together. This sub-assembly, however, will go in its place a little bit later in the build. The turrets will need some work too. The gaps between the fairing and the gun mount is quite significant. To fix that, I glued a piece of sheet plastic on each side of the gun mount and then trimmed and sanded the excess with the mount fitted inside the turret. Next up, I addressed the gap in the chin area using CA glue which I carefully shaped using a flat file. After I was happy with the overall shape and the gaps, I applied Tamiya basic type putty to achieve a smooth finish. Painting started as usual with some black primer. Then I applied Tamiya's LP11 silver all over the details. Then I applied LP19 gun metal on the 3D printed gun barrels. For the weathering, I started with dark grey panel line accent color from Tamiya. 
After it was dry, I wiped the excess away using a Q-tip very slightly damped with mineral spirits. I think that this panel line accent color is very suitable for natural metal finishes. After gluing the gun mount inside the turret fairing, I applied Starship Field oil paint on the lower edge of the fairing and blended it so that the intensity of the color reduces the higher on the turret we go. The same oil paint I used to add some grime on the gaps around the gun mounts. To be fair, I did not expect to be able to create a perfect fit part, but there you go. The turret gun barrels, which I destroyed trying to drill them out, were replaced with these 3D printed parts which I designed and printed myself. The Elegu Mars 3 did a great job printing at 10 microns. What you can see here is a part that I did not send at all. The kit provides the internal structure of the top turret as it is occupying a portion of the bomb bay. The details are adequate if you take the actual visibility as a factor. I decided not to spend too much time here but still made some improvements. After the assembly I drilled out the holes in the frame and tapered them using slightly larger drill bit. They were there to begin with but only as a slight suggestion. I also installed a cable which I suppose is how the turret receives commands from the aiming station. After painting the overall green color, I brush painted the ammo boxes in black and then did some bare metal chipping with silver pencil. After that I glued the structure to the Bombay ceiling and assembled the frame. I also glued the cable to the ceiling right next to the real bug head contact surface. For me this is more than enough for a part that will require lifting the model to be seen. In the previous video of the Invader series, we created the napalm tanks and printed them into existence. Now it is time to do the painting and the weathering. After the primer, I applied Tamiya LP11 Silver on the tanks and their pylons. Next, on the pylons, I applied Liquid Mask using a sponge. As you all know, this will be used to do some bare metal chipping later on. On the pictures available for this particular aircraft, it is visible that the pylons are painted with a very bright orange red color. So I got some fluorescent red from Mr. Hobby and applied it over the pylons. To be fair, this is an awful color to look at. My eyes were in agony, but this is like it is in the pictures. So I was brave and continued painting. After the paint had some time to cure, I dipped a toothpick into the masking liquid and after it was dry I used it to remove the masking on a pylon and revealed the natural metal finish underneath the paint. On the tanks first I applied gloss varnish to protect the silver, then some hairspray to facilitate the paint chipping, and then some yellow paint as per the reference images. I am not sure why a single use item would have such severe paint damage, but since images suggest that I can only speculate that it was due to poor paint job in the field conditions combined with less than careful handling from the ground personnel. So using water to reactivate the hairspray and various scrubbing devices I did a lot of damage. Unfortunately I continue to experience issues with this technique namely the pattern at which paint starts to dissolve. In my case it always begins with circular patterns which to say the least is not very realistic. Anyhow, using a toothpick I managed to obtain some more presentable results. I am pretty sure that such large details on the exterior of the model will attract a lot of attention, especially when they are so vividly colored and heavily weathered. Using Tamiya's dark grey accent color once again, I outlined the details around the flange and the filler neck of the tank. This is solely to create more volume and make the details more visible. The accent color was followed by a matte varnish over the entire surface. This layer is applied in order to create a better surface for the oil paint to grip. But before I apply any oil paint, I covered the details with white spirit. 
Then I spread some dots of buff oil paint and stippled the paint all over the place, similar to what we did, similar to what I did on the bombs earlier on. Next, using a larger flat brush, I created streaky texture dragging the brush from the top to the bottom avoiding the area near the flange. There I want the oil paint to remain mostly in its stippled state. After the oil paint is dry it leaves a nice matte effect that varies with the amount of paint in the area. I left that to cure until the next day and then I applied dots of Starship Field all over the place. Then I blended those using a dry brush. The idea behind this is to represent grime from various sources like greasy rugs or fingers. You get the idea. Next I applied some Starship base lurch around the filler neck to put an accent because spills and such were probably not wiped right away, thus allowed some dust and dirt to cling to the liquid even if it was shortly after filling it. And for some wet looking spill effect I used shaft and bearing grease from AK, which remains shiny when it dries and it should do the job just fine. The next and final sub-assembly that we are going to deal with are the engines. And this will be on the next video of the series. If you want to get insights and follow the process visit me on Patreon, where I upload progress pictures almost daily. There you will also find downloadable 3D files of details that I create. And a lot of friendly people. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy modeling fellas!